to the special meeting of the Danvers School Committee for Monday, October 24th, 2022, at which we will appoint a new member to the School Committee. We'll begin, as always, with our Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all. <clears throat> so by way of housekeeping, uh, what we will be doing is interviewing uh, the three candidates who are still candidates tonight. Um, we will bring them in separately and interview them not in the presence of each other. We will ask each of the candidates the same questions. Um, school committee members will, in however way they choose, rate or rank or you know make a decision as to who they feel would be the best uh, person once the interviews are completed we'll bring all three people in and we will begin uh, voting the voting uh, will take place by way of uh, as usual someone making a motion and a second the person making the motion uh, i would allow a brief uh, supporting commentary as to the, their decision. Um, I would recommend that we sort of leave it at that, um, given all of the uh, three candidates will be here and uh, we want them all to feel welcome. And uh, so that's basically how we're, we're going to do it. Um, obviously, if someone has something very important to say about any of the candidates, I, yeah, get my attention and we'll, and we'll do it. Um, so with that, why don't we bring in our first candidate? What? <coughs> I'll try and talk. Uh, there you go. I'm going to assume you are Joshua. That's me. Josh is fine, yeah. Welcome. Welcome, Josh. Uh, uh, we're very glad to have you with us. Uh, Joshua Kepnes. Yep. So the town knows who you are. That's right. And uh, let me give you just a little background on the process here. Uh, so what we're going to be doing is uh, each of us will ask you a question. Um, ask you to answer as fully as you'd like to or as possible. Um, it's not out of the realm of possibility someone might have a follow-up question for. It. Um, once you're done, we're going to have you go back to the atrium where you were waiting, bring in the next candidate, do their interview, bring in the next candidate, do their interview. So none of you will see the other interviews. When everything is done, then we'll bring you all back, and then the uh, school committee will begin the process of voting. Okay. So, uh, any questions before we begin? No, sounds good. Appreciate all it. Right. I'm on the hot seat. Let's do it. So, uh, first of all, you know, thank you for your interest. One, being willing to serve your town is uh, always a positive thing. And uh, 
you know, the job of a school committee person takes a fair amount of time and energy out of your life. And uh, but I think we'd all say it's very rewarding. So um, we're very thankful that you've expressed the interest and in that uh, you're going to allow us to chat with you about this. Sure. You got it. All right. So do you have any questions? No. All right. So our first question uh, will come from me. And the question is, uh, what qualities would you bring to the Danvers School Committee? Yeah, I think um, one of the biggest, when I look at a school committee and, and what I would want to work with, it would be somebody that's collaborative, right? Somebody that um, can work with not only the actual school committee themselves, but also other members of the community, other members of the school administration, right? Um, I'm yeah. going to ask you to speak more directly into the mic if you could. I'm sorry. These are Do I have to apparently repeat? not you get that now? direction. All right. Yes. Oh, that's a that's a world of difference. All right. Good. Thank you. Sorry about that. All right. So uh, what I was saying before, I'll, I'll, I'll back up. But uh, when I look at a quality that I would want to work with, it would be somebody that would be collaborative, somebody that could work with the members of the school committee, members of the community, members of the administration. Um, so I think uh, being having that collaborative way about me would would totally do that. I also look at things very analytically. I look at things that I would look at to see if there's a process in place. Is there something that, you know, is there a process in place that can be improved? Or it, does, a, does a process even exist? Um, so I, I would look at things very objectively and, and try to see if there's, there's gaps. And when you find gaps, then you try to plug those gaps. Um, I would also say, just this is what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. So at, uh, in my day job, I'm responsible for learning and development for adults, right? So corporate corporate training. So when we have gaps within uh, any sort of learning that happens at, at my uh, my company, they come to me and they say, okay, we have these gaps. How can we, how can we fill those and, and what needs to be done? So then I start to ask those questions, right? So I think it's also seeking to understand. I would say is a is another way that another quality that I would bring to to you know before making making decisions or um, you know jumping to conclusions. I think it's always good to seek seek to understand and assume good intentions on the on the other person's end. So that I would also bring that to the table as well. Great. Um, I didn't ask you about your uh, background. I know we know because we have paperwork in front sure. of it, but for the town, just maybe your educational history and how long you've lived here. And yeah. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so uh, my wife and I moved here in 2012. Uh, we're raising uh, two kids here, one in fourth grade and one in seventh grade, uh, Smith School and, and the middle school. And uh, we love it here. Uh, it's been a, a great uh, a great experience for us. And, and that's where I see, you know, a, a, I don't want to pack up and move. It's one of those things I'd like to, to see. I see areas for improvement. So let's let's stay here and you know the thought of even packing up my house and my bedroom alone would try you know is, is overwhelming to me right i don't, I don't want to pack uh so just uh but it, you know it's one of those things that I, I think it's time for me to to uh to take an initiative and, and try to make some change for the better but um grew, uh, educational background i uh, graduated uh, miller's high school so a product of the miller's high school public system and uh went to graduate babson um in 2000 so um great yeah all right, thank you. You got it. I believe Robin has our next question. All right. What is the best way to address differences of opinion, whether it's on the committee or between the community and the committee? Yeah, no, it's. I think that's a good question. I think it's, um, I, I, you know, forgive my, my uh, repetition here, but see, seeking to understand and, and to assume good intentions is always a good thing. So that just because you don't, have the same opinion doesn't mean it's the wrong opinion so let's see where somebody's coming from let's try to understand their point of view um at the end of the day you may not uh you may not agree but i, I think it's a great way to to start you can start that conversation it's a great you have to have a jumping jumping off point in some place um but i think it's also you know one of the things that i do also is i do communications training right to understand what are what are some ways that we can better have our message received by other people um, to understand, you know, how can I adjust my communication so Robin hears me better, right? It might be a little bit different than the way Alice hears it, or Gabe, or, or Eric. So I think it's a it's a way. How can I how can I better communicate with with everybody to you know not raise the temperature of the conversation? That's always a difficult thing. You can say things that can really set people off. So if you can avoid those hot buttons and things, I think it's also a great way to um, to keep the the temperature of the conversation low and and avoid you know, tempers from flaring at that point, so. Thank you. You got it. 
All right, I'm the next one. Um, what issues do you believe Danvers Public Schools needs to address, and then what changes would you recommend? Yeah, so th there's a couple of them, and it's it's tough for me to even rank them. But you know, when it, when I start to think about putting my name in, in for this, I, I start to think about the things that are bothering me and my family. So I look at um, the first one I would say is uh, curriculum, right? So I, I have two kids and there it's truly a, a tale of two different kids. I have one kid in the middle school. Uh, my son is going through and, and unchallenged, right? So he is, you know, ha having, uh, he's having a tough time being challenged in and day to day basis and, and we're seeing him kind of go through, kind of skating through and, and pulling great grades, which which honestly, I, I you know, it sounds obnoxious to say that, but it's just like, we, we don't see a big challenge for him. Um, and then my daughter was in second grade when the pandemic hit and she missed crucial key learning experiences at that point. And we're, we're struggling to have her meet baseline at this point. So there there's a, a gap there as well where we're having a tough time for that. So. Uh, to, to address that, I would say that we need to look at the curriculum. How are things going on? I haven't seen my kid get assigned, either one of my kids get assigned a book to read, right? How, it, other than independent learning. Where, so where's, how do we hold them accountable? How do we know that they read a book? How do we know that there's a, how do we assess that? Where's the data? Um, the other thing is, um, you know, I, I think the DE&I stuff right now, I mean, the, the anti-Semitism stuff has hit our family personally. And, um, you know, that, that's one of the things I think that we're starting to make big, big changes here. But I think that we need to look at outside experts for something like that. Um, you know, I, I think we can see that <clears throat> those things need to be addressed. And maybe we're not equipped to do that. You have to bring in an outside expert to kind of say, OK, what have what have people done in other school systems? How can we how can we change this? this brand of the Danvers school system right now, right? We're, we're kind of stuck a little bit in, in mediocrity, you know, as far as where we, we, we rank amongst the state, um, but also our, you know, our, our school system or the, the town is making uh, news for the wrong reasons right now. So, you know, I would look to address the, the de and I and, and see if we can make a, an impact with that. Um, the MCAS scores, I looked at the MCAS scores I, uh, at the last meeting that you guys had. And I looked at all the data and it was, it was, um, you know, there, there was some good things that were coming out of the data, uh, but I looked at the, the middle school data and that was very eye opening, right? There was a huge delta between where, where things were and it seemed like that's where we're, we're okay. We, we have to really kind of figure out what's going on in the, in the school system at the, at the middle school level and start to address some of those changes. So I, I think we need to take a deep dive and see what's going on there. Um, and then I, I think we need a leader where everybody's going to be tasked to to pick this leader of a, a new superintendent and i think that that's a it's a great place to start we need great leadership here uh we need to pull ourselves out of that area of what i call mediocrity I, you know I, I was looking at the when people presenting they did a great job presenting the data um but they were presenting the data and not necessarily saying what the solutions were at that point what are some areas that we can do and, and that's that's not my area of expertise i don't know how to fix an mcas score i i, I understand that's a big shift a big ship to turn and um, you know you have to start somewhere but where can we get the quick wins where can we start to see some improvement um, so I, you know I would look to to see if we can have a, a great leader that can can take on that task and see if we can start to have some gaps because if I ever presented that data at, at you know at my superiors would want to know what what is what's my plan to mitigate that what, what's my plan to, to change that so I, I think we need to look at that as well thank you yeah. Hi, Josh. <clears throat> My question is, how much influence, if any, do you believe parents should have in curriculum and materials used by our students, and why? Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think, I, I guess it's a, it's a very personal you know, thing to, to get involved with that. And I think everybody can have those. To, I think we should listen to the community, but also lean on experts. So if there's a way to kind of find that middle of the road, how do we how do we have that? I, I think parents should be involved. I think parents should have a voice in that. Um, and and I, I do think that at the end of the day, we need to take everybody's opinion into consideration. Um, but we should also have a, a panel of experts that understand what the best thing to do is and, and kind of communicate if, if it doesn't necessarily agree with what the parents want. Let's let's explain why. Let's explain what the what the right steps are to take and what those right steps are. But I do believe that that the parents should have a 
uh, have have some sort of say in that or, or be able to offer some sort of an opinion on that. Yeah. You got it. All right. <clears throat> this went by relatively quickly. Um, I talk super fast. You have, that's all right. Do, <laughs> do we have other questions that we want to ask? Um, I'd love to know your thoughts on what the strengths of our um, public schools are here in Danvers. Yeah, I, I think there's there's a lot of good things that are happening, right? So when we, no matter what you look at, as far as the the rankings, whatever third party ranking, you know, I, I did a fair amount of homework on that as far as looking at U.S. News and World, World Report, Niche.com, all these different third party places that that look at it, and it looks like we we do have some good things going on here, right? From from an objective point of view, when people rate these things. You know, sports, um, you know, or music and art, it, it, you know, there's there are things that we are doing well on. I think academically, I think we're having a tough time. But I think this there's some great bright spots that we have. We have um, and I think we do. We have to do a better job of highlighting those things. Um, and, you know, I, I heard on the most recent meeting that you guys had as far as inviting the student body into the DE and I um, on the the inclusion committee, right? So they're gonna have some student representatives. So I, I think in including student body into things, whether it be in the school council a little bit more, um, I, I think we need to hear voices from, from people like that. And I think we are doing a pretty good job with that. Um, but I, I think we have to celebrate the wins too. And I think we need to highlight those wins. Um, and, and if we're gonna create some sort of a, a positive PR, uh, I, think, I think we need to work on those, as, you know, highlight those. Any other questions? All right. Um, I guess I would like to to just delve a little bit, and you can sort of treat this as a as a closing statement, if sure. you want. Sure. But um, talk a little bit about your educational philosophy and what you think the role of the schools in the town should be. So my overall philosophy of education sure. in, in general. Okay. Um, it's, a, it's, it's broad, but I'll, I'll give it to you. I, I think we need to look at ways to, when, when I create a curriculum for adults, right, we, we have to look at how do we give them some sort of pre-work, how do we give them the actual content, and then how do we pull that through, right? And I think we have to look at things, you know, the, the principles of, of adult learning is different than, than kids, but a lot of those concepts are very similar, right? So we are, if we're trying to find ways we need to assess we need to get data we need to to find out where those those strengths are if if they're not meeting benchmark we need to be able to get down to a granular level and find out where those areas are um, so I, I think we need to hold people accountable to you know in general and whether it's in the in the schools you know if if things are not meeting uh, where they should be we need to hold people accountable there and we need to find out where the plans are um, but I, I think we need to, there, there's you know, some, some great, great things that we can do here. And I think, I don't think it's all bad and that's not my position to say that. I, I think that there are some good things going on here, but I think we can try to find and, um, and, and strengthen it even more. But I, I think the school system is, should, should do what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to get our kids ready and, and educate them and, and get them ready for college and, um, and, and set them off and, and into the world and, and, and be, be ready for it. Um, so any way that we can do that, I, th I think is the is you know, you know any way that we can improve that experience for our kids, I think um, should be done. You know, and, and like I said, I, I graduated uh, you know public school, and I I'm, the last thing I want to do is is pull my kids out and put them in private school. Right? Mm -hmm. A, it's a financial burden, and and B, it's just it might not necessarily be you know the the answer for it. So I think it's. Um, I, you know, I want to keep my kids in the school system. I want to see my kids graduate Danvers High School and and go off to good schools and and be in a, a you know really good spot. Okay. Anything else you'd like to add? No, I, I, I would say you know this is this is passionate to me. I, I had the the things that I see right now are are what I those are the, it's a little microcosm of what I see with my two kids, right? And the the other families that I that I speak with, right? And I, and I think that. It is, you, you know, the, the things that I brought up might not necessarily be affecting everybody, but I, I'd like to have some sort of a forum where I'd be able to meet those people, find out what those issues are in the community that are affecting, you know, not just my little family, my little circle of friends, but to find out what are those bigger areas that, that we can start to, to, um, to address. 
So, you know, I, I, I appreciate everybody's time. I'm super interested in this role. I think it's time for me to, to, to step up and, and stop talking about this you know, behind closed doors and start to try to make an impact and try to find some solutions. Great. So. Thank you. Anything else before we let Josh head back? No? It sounds like we're good. Thank you, Josh. Josh, it's a pleasure. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> Hello. Welcome. Thank you. Good evening. And uh, you are Heidi Moore? Yes. Welcome to the school committee and to the interview process. Thank you. Um, let me give you a, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, just sort of a, a couple of minute description of what we're doing tonight. Okay. So um, we have, uh, we're interviewing three candidates, including you. Um, and as you can tell, you were asked to wait outside while we did the first one. And uh, you will be sent back after you're done here, sent back to the same place and we'll interview our third candidate. Um, same questions are being asked to every candidate, though there is some room for follow-up that could possibly differ, but <clears throat> the main body of questions are the same for everybody. Okay. Um, once all three candidates have been interviewed, we'll have you all come in here. And then a voting process will begin. There'll be a motion, a second, uh, to nominate someone for the school committee. There'll be a vote. And, uh, you know, at this point, it'll be three out of uh, three out of the four of us have to agree. Okay. And uh, that could change, too. There could be a motion to make it uh, unanimous. But um, any way you cut it, at least three of the four of us will end up having to agree. And um, then we'll announce the new school committee person tonight. And, okay. Uh, the second thing I would say is, first, thank you very much for being with us. This is um, to be willing to um, serve on a school committee or any board in town. It's a big thing. Um, it's a time commitment. It is a passion commitment. And uh, it takes a lot of work. And the fact that you have um, put yourself out here um, is something you should be proud of, regardless of what happens today. So, thank you. Thank you for your kind words. Um, I think just to, just I'm going to mix it up just a little bit. Would you like to tell us a little something about yourself before the first question? Sure. Uh, my name is Heidi Mora. I grew up in Peabody, uh, but in 2013, my husband and myself, who we have two children, were looking for our forever home. And something that is um, so important to us when we were looking is the school system for our children. I myself, uh, my mother, has been forever a teacher in Peabody instilled the education is the key to success along with hard work and, and a solid work ethic. And I wanna afford that same opportunity for our children. So if anyone who knows me, uh, before any decisions made, I am doing research, I'm checking, I'm double checking. So we very fortunate to move to Danvers. Um, professionally, I have 22 years at the Sheriff's Department. I started, um, the ripe young age of 21 and have worked myself on up again with a, a lot of phenomenal opportunity there. Um, I, I credit my the educational background I have 
but what I also know is I had shift work, I was held over, I had young babies, so I like to think I come from a background, I, I understand things from different point of views that others may not so much. Um, but I'm here ultimately because you know, a few years back, some situations had happened. I'm committed to this town. I'm committed to my children. And it got to a point where I look, my, I look at myself when I look in the mirror and I say, what am I doing to not just talk about what I think the problem is? What am I doing to make an actual effort to make solid changes, to be a voice and bring it forward? Uh, so that is ultimately why I'm sitting here today. Okay, thank you. Um, with that, oh, you, with that, I'll go to my first, our first question, and we'll go right down the line. Sure. So the first question is, what qualities would you bring to the Danvers School Committee? So uh, my thought process in life, um, I'll say when different situations arose that came from the school system, the first thing I think about is what's being done to prevent whatever the situation is. Um, for example, let's say, bullying what are we doing to prevent the next question that pops into mind is what are we doing when a situation presents itself to investigate it uh, are we doing a thorough investigation and are we doing it appropriate to each different level and then finally what are we doing to address the situation and again it would be different at different levels but what are we doing to address anything that's coming up and then it's constantly going back and reassessing and starting from square one back again, are we preventing as times change? Are we appropriately preventing? Are we again investigating everything properly? And are we addressing? Thank you. Robin. What is the best way to, oh, I'm gonna start over. What is the best way to address differences of opinion, whether it's on the committee or between the community and the committee? First off, I think everyone wants an opportunity to be heard. Uh, so it's allowing that opportunity to first be heard and to really be heard. Um, secondly, I think we all always need to understand that we all come from different backgrounds. We have different thought processes and they're all valid. So I know I find myself, I will remind myself, take a step back, understand that person's point of view address that I understand and it might be to reiterate though you know whatever my point of view might be um, when it comes to the school system whether it's the, it's the boards its parents ultimately it's keeping in mind that we have a goal and we have to keep moving forward one step forward after the other I might have three things that I think need to happen but I am going to consider it a success if I'm working with a group of people one of them I met because I know it's better than what we were and someone else will feel that same way. But I think that communication and that ability to hear and, and just the common goal, that end goal is our children. It ultimately is our children. So if we all take a step forward, we're all winning. Thank you. Um, what issues do you believe Danvers Public Schools needs to address and what changes would you recommend? So when I think of that, there's, there's different situations that come to mind. I kind of touch upon it before. I really think providing a safe, secure, supportive learning environment is the main kind of foundation we need to lay out. If we do that, everything else can fall into place. I cannot sit here and say that the actual education background is in my forte. It is not. I, again, with my law enforcement background, the way I approach things, um, students and educators should not have any sort of fear to come into school. Uh, we look around the world that we live in today, and it is a scary place. And we have to learn from the past that we've experienced, and we need to learn and look around at the communities that are around us and what they're dealing with. And we cannot put our head in the sand and think, not us, it can't happen to us, it won't happen to us, because it has, it, it happens around us. So what I would like to bring is just that, what I think the committee has possibly not have had in the past, but I would like to bring forward is gonna be more that safe, secure environment. And that's gonna be mentally, emotionally, and physically. Um, it's kind of how I look at things, and then after that, 
when all that noise is kind of put to rest, that learning will really thrive and, and really come to light. Okay. Thank you. How much influence, if any, do you believe parents should have in curriculum and, materi and materials used by our students and why? Well, that's a good question. Um, so me being very passionate about uh, my children's education, I have found myself there's times um, there might be a new curriculum that's brought in. I don't, I feel somewhat lost. I may not fully understand. Um, again, it comes back to one of the first questions asked. I think parents should be heard. Uh, you know, parents know their children. They know children, some children might be more quiet at school and they're gonna open up at home. And you know, parents are the voice of their children. So I do think there needs to be an opportunity for them to be heard. Uh, but I think one of the jobs that the school committee board members have is to hear everyone's voice. And then it's deciphering and coming up with a solution that helps the community as a whole, the, the school board member, the school students as a whole, but also going back and the individual students and parents that may have some concern, now what can we do to help you along so that we're reaching everyone out there? Okay. <clears throat> Gabe, do you want to, uh, or does anyone else want to ask a question? I know we've had the question for the uh, the first candidate. No. Probably appropriate to ask it here again. Oh, would you? Oh, that was my question. Oh, I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> what do you believe are some strengths of the Danvers that's public right. school system? But that's actually an easy one for me to answer. It's literally the teachers. It's the classroom teachers. I have been very fortunate. I have two children in the school system. They're currently in sixth and seventh grade. They've been in the school system since kindergarten. And I am always so impressed when I sit with a teacher um, and I know they know my, my child. Um, and my children are different from each other. So I had the communication has always been great. The support has been great. Uh, I think educators have one of the toughest jobs there is. And our students, our children, the second place that they're at, more so than home, is school. Um, so we need to support our teachers because honestly, that's why I have faith here, is because I have had such a great experience as my children have gone through Denver school system. Yeah. Other questions from the committee? No. Um, what do you think the role of the schools is in a community um, in terms of things like SEL and um, equity seeking district and is there too much emphasis on that now not enough where do you feel we stand in Danvers so I've learned in life balance is everything balance is everything and sometimes as humans that pendulum we swing one way so far we swing the other way so far um, social emotional learning is a piece of the puzzle um, accountability is another piece of the puzzle uh, finding equity is huge I, you know I always talk about Danvers is a community in itself, and we want to represent our community, but we actually need to look beyond just Danvers. We need to prepare our children for the future, the, the, the work that they're going to eventually end up in. They're going to expose them to many, many different um, situations out there. Uh, I always say social media, the internet, they're exposing our children to so much more. We cannot think that we're keeping our children in a bubble. It's just not happening. So yes. I, I personally think we need to appropriately expose our children, um, give them the tools they need to move through life and to be successful. And, and again, like I said, schools is where they're at. Second most time, second most amount of time than from home. Um, so it is important that we are doing all of that. But it's a balance with everything. Okay. Um, at this point, I want to sort of turn the floor over to you to Tell us anything that you'd like to talk about that we haven't asked. Um, that tell us about your interest in the job. It's really your time, um, whatever you would like to talk about. I appreciate that. Sure. Uh, so as mentioned earlier, I'm, I'm Mama Bear. Um, very, very much, as many people are, 
uh, involved in my student, in my children growing up in Danvers. Um, I will be honest with everyone here, when my husband and myself were first looking on where to move, the one little bit concern we had was Dan with Danvers is, you know, how much diversity is, or lack of diversity there may be. But we also knew that we are a changing community. We have a very strong family core value. I will say we came here and we are very happy with the you know individuals we've met, the friends my children's made, the families. Um, but we can always do better. I am disappointed is quite kindly to say what has kind of transpired in the past few years. Um, it, it was hurtful uh, to know that that is going on in our backyard. Um, but we can do better. This forced the hand, unfortunately, but here we are. What I am excited is that I see there's change. Um, we're in a time of change and change is good. And I take everything as a learning experience for my children. This is, uh, I'm having constant conversations with my children, what's appropriate, what's not, what are you seeing around you and what are we gonna do better? Um, so this is actually, a good time because I do see the progress forward. I think everyone here, all eyes are watching. I am, to be quite honest, very impressed with the individuals that put in for this position. I'm impressed with, you know, how viewers are coming out, how parents are watching. We all care. And in order for us to move forward, voices need to be heard. We're coming together as a community. Doesn't matter what our backgrounds are, what our skin colors are, we are coming together for the same common goal. So I am um, very thankful for this opportunity. You, you all have the tough uh, job to pick someone, but I'm actually quite happy with the people that I see this progress moving forward. I will say, if I do not get this position, I, I will still always be here. Um, I will continue to help in any way I can, voice my opinion when appropriate, and be any sort of su support I can be. Great, thank you. Anything else from the committee? All right, we are all set. Thank, thank you, you very, very much. We'll have you go thank back you. to the atrium, and we'll be back to you in a little bit. Good evening. Hi. Our Alexis, welcome. Hi. We're glad to have you here. Thank you. Um, let me um, just give a brief, a brief overview of the process. Um, so you have been waiting for two other interviews to complete. And uh, now it's your turn. And then when uh, this is over, um, I think we'll probably um, maybe take a brief break just to stretch our legs then. Um, we're going to have all three of you come in for the voting. And uh, the voting will be at this point by a majority. person has to get at least three votes to be elected. And um, first of all, I, I guess I would say thank you for putting yourself out there. It is a um, school committee is 
it's a lot of work. It's a commitment. It's an emotional commitment, and uh, it's a responsibility. And you know, in terms of, we do have an impact, and that's the best part of it. We have an impact on all of the students in Danvers, far beyond our own families. It's an impact that can last into the future. Um, so uh, I want to thank you and commend you for being willing to fill this role. Um, what we'll do is we'll, I'm going to ask you to tell us a little something about yourself in the background, and then uh, we'll each have a question for you, and there's bound to be one or two follow-ups, I would say. Um, and so uh, I'm going to ask you to speak really closely into that microphone because it's it's pretty much on the, I'm sorry, uh, just one directional. So um, if you don't speak right into it, it's possible that we and the good folks at home won't hear. So, all right. So with that, um, Alexis, why don't you tell us something about yourself, your background, um, and your interest in the position? So my name is Alexis Smith Atuquefio. I am a mother of two girls in the school district. Uh, one at Great Oak and one in the middle school. Professionally by education, I'm a chemical engineer, but I run operations for a medical device company, a startup down in Boston. I also um, am a president of the National Society of the Black Engineers. Can I stop you for one Absolutely. second? Absolutely. Is it not good enough? Green light is on. Sorry. It's okay. Closer. Mic check, one, two, one, two. I apologize for interrupting. All right, no, it's Thank fine. Let's start from the top here. Okay. <laughs> Alexis Smith, Atu Quathio. I'm the mother of two girls in the Danvers School District, one at Great Oak and one in the middle school. Um, by education, I'm a chemical engineer. Uh, professionally, I work as the head of operations for a medical device company in Boston. Um, I also do some nonprofit work for the National Society of Black Engineers, um, which is a 501c3, um, huge professional organization um, aimed at increasing the number of culturally responsible black engineers who succeed academically and excel professionally. The organization is over 30 years old and has created over 10,000 engineers of color um, and are in, in the diaspora um, with opportunities in STEM. Um, my work there um, really helps me connect with a lot of school districts in the area. So I advise on PAC panels, on STEM, on you know math education, how do we improve math education um, in the state? How do we connect resources with the corporate world to schools um, and creating those opportunities through after school programs or through mentoring opportunities? Um, all types of robotics and good stuff. So that's kind of what I do in my spare time when I'm not momming and working. Um, but that uh, made me most interested, I would say, in um, you know what I could contribute uh, to the Danvers Public School. Um, so when this opportunity presented itself um, and my time permits, I prayed on it <laughs> to see if I could commit myself and um, which was important. Um, and so when those things aligned, it pretty much said, let me take on the opportunity and, and help in a way that I could help. I don't, uh, as Mary would know, I give my opinion when needed, <laughs> um, but I definitely wanted to just be a, a resource. All right, thank you. Um, so we'll begin with the questions, and uh, I'll have the first question, then we'll go right down the line, and then I'll ask for any follow-ups, and we'll go from there. Um, so our first question for you is, what qualities would you bring to the Danvers School Committee? Oh, okay. <laughs> um, I would say my network um, is, is one uh, within the state of Massachusetts. That's one. Um, but I think, you know, as a leader, a professional leader um, who's managed large teams, um, I know the importance of being collaborative um, to really get things done, um, to look at the data, let the data tell the story, um, but then also seek input because when it comes to human lives which is in med tech there's always a person behind that so data tells one story and then you supplement that with the with the real story right to help facilitate um an answer and so i've been doing that in my professional career for a long time i look young um, <laughs> um so those are the qualities that i think i can bring like collaboration working well great personality um and my network 
to my knowledge. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. What is the best way to address differences of opinion, whether it's on the committee or between the community and the committee? Yeah, so I think it's 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 listen, right? So listening to what people say, watching, so watching their body language. You know, sometimes um, how people are standing or holding themselves kind of tells a lot. Like sometimes when I'm nervous, I'm like, like this or I'm fidgeting. Um, and so watching their body language and then learning from what they have to say, right? So um, if you can listen and learn from what people have to say, even if their opinion differs from yours, right, you can move to a decision um, in operations, which I do professionally, we're never on the same page, right? I want my vendors to give me something now. They tell me they can't give it to me for another six months and we gotta find a resolution. They wanna charge me $10, I only wanna pay a dollar. Um, you know, we have to get to a resolution. So negotiating those um, those deals kind of helps you maneuver in those challenging um, conversations. And I try not to be emotional, right? Um, it just, you know, in, in certain situations, um, leading with emotion may not always be the right thing to do when things um when you differ in opinion or you're not on the same page instead it's leading with empathy and compassion thank you you're welcome um what issues do you believe danvers public schools needs to address and what changes would you recommend okay so i think very importantly stem um both, you know, within the district and the MCAS report, right? We've seen a uh, lowering of um, scores with respect to math. Um, and then nationally, it's the same with math and reading. Um, STEM and STEM learning has evolved drastically and it innovates rapidly. Um, there are lots of learning tools available to help increase engagement with math and science and making it more relatable for young people. Um, and so when we're at a point where uh, we need to improve, sometimes you have to improve engagement and kids get really excited when they see what they're doing, not just from a work perspective, one plus one is two, but what does that mean in the real world for them and they can make it relatable to themselves. Um, so bringing that, that STEM um, lens, um, those connections to the, the board um, and to the, the district, I think is the, um, probably the most uh, important thing I can do. And then if you repeat the second question, second half of the question, that'll be great. I had to actually look. Um, <laughs> what, what changes would you recommend? Um, I think sitting from this seat as, as a parent, you know, I can come up with a thousand things that I want to change. Um, but I only have the lens uh, through fourth grade and my years at Great Oak, right? Um, but I can't say that I want to change something per se, but I do want to make sure that we're improving um, that line of communication between leadership and administration and parents and really trying to understand what it means to communicate effectively with them um, and to bring the knowledge that's important to the parents um, to their doorsteps. You know, one thing I see is that as parents, we don't always get connected to the resources that are being used in the classroom. So even if we want to supplement our children's education and help, we're often you know, stuck trying to find that on our own or by the luck of the draw, you're having to reach out to the teacher who already has a million things to do, right? Um, and so I think that communication probably would be, if I had to say there was one thing, communication um, in a more effective way really needs to improve. You're welcome. Thank you. How much influence, how much influence, if any, do you believe parents should have in curriculum and materials used by our students and Ooh. why? I know it's a loaded question. <laughs> how much influence do I think parents should have in the curriculum? This is tough because it would depend, right, on the experience of the parent, right? you know, are the teachers and the district and the administrators in the district um, have went to school for this. They have years of experience in this. So naturally, like, you know, 
you don't tell your doctor how to give you surgery, right? So why would you tell the teachers how to teach your kid? Um, but I think we also have to realize that as parents, right, we have a vested interest in our children's success. And that vested interest in their success comes with opinions, <laughs> right, wrong, or indifferent. Um, and, you know, some of the things that parents maybe bring to the table might be worth evaluating. So it's it's important for them to have a forum where they feel like they can influence and where they can be heard um, about the curriculum and what changes can be made and how um, they can support and be a part of the process. Um, so should they be dictating or writing curriculum? Yeah, absolutely. If they're a teacher and they work in the district, mm -hmm. they should. Um, but if not, then we need to provide them the forum so that they can um, you know, provide their opinions of what's working, what's not being, um, what's not working, what they feel is, their, how their student, I should say, is not being served um, to, to the school committee, to the leadership, and we should be the voice back to the classrooms and to the administration to help improve the, the curriculum. Thank you. Um, are there follow-ups from the committee? I had the one question. Um, what are some strengths of the Danvers public school system? Um, I know it's like sports, no, but um, in all honesty, I think that at least in my experience, um, having reached out to administrators and teachers, they've all been very responsive and supportive to the needs of my daughters. Um, I love that there is a music program at HRMS. My daughter loves it. Um, and I think general, generally, like when you talk about the the core of a person, people are nice. And I think that we've done a good job of, of bringing in um, those nice people. We could work on the diversity of the teachers, definitely. Um, but definitely, I think at the core, there's teachers that care about the kids. And that's so important because you can't teach that, you know? Thank you. You're welcome. Great. Um, anyone else? I have one more question, which is, um, <coughs> What do you think the proper role of the schools are within a town um, when it comes, for example, to uh, things like um, inclusion and uh, social emotional learning? Um, what are your thoughts or your philosophy on that? Of the school or the people? How the, well, the All school or the people, basically <laughs> okay. the role of the uh, the role of the schools within a town in those areas. Yeah. So. There's been studies, right, that when students can show up confident and them whole selves um, to whatever setting that they're in, they learn better. So you can't have a student who may physically look different or practices a different religion show up to school confidently every day if the school is not inclusive, right? That's just you know, bare bones. So the school has to be inclusive. Um, the teachers have to understand what that means to be able to um, provide perspective. And the school has to provide a safe place for kids to be in those six and a half hours out of the day. And I think we also have to recognize that in some cases, school may be the safest place that a student is and that they don't get to go home to a safe place. So the school sometimes plays a more critical role than we even want to, right? And that sometimes that our, our administrators may not want to take on, but they know that when they come in that building, sometimes they're the safest adult that that student has. So the school has a huge role today in inclusivity and in social emotional learning and having kids show up to school every single day and be confident and the teachers deserve that because when the student is confident and they're engaged they're learning and what we're doing then is producing positive productive future leaders and that's what we need to do thank you yeah no problem thank you now at this point um, assuming there's no other questions I'd like to give you the floor for however long you'd like um, to Tell us anything you want to tell us that didn't come up in terms of the questions uh, or anything you help think would help us make a decision or you just the points you want us to know about you. Okay, I am really bad about, um, 
at talking about myself. <laughs> um, and I think that when I thought about applying for this role and this vacancy, um, you know, I talked to a few of my friends and the district moms in the district, um, and they were overwhelmingly supportive. Um, and that they, kudos I guess they gave me and the confidence they gave me in this position to advocate for their children made me feel like um, maybe I undersell myself so I think that it's important to advocate for kids and I think that that's probably going to be my loudest voice you know on the school committee like wh what are we doing what's best for the kids um, and then the I can't drive home enough the importance of STEM um, <laughs> like I'm going to say it again and not just STEM and students becoming engineers but that these are core foundation skills and being so tied into industry and workforce development and seeing where where those opportunities are going. I don't wanna see my kids who are educated in the Danvers public school system um, lose out on those opportunities because they're not prepared selfishly. Um, but for all of the kids in the district to be prepared for those opportunities that are available and not be limited by not being prepared. Um, you know, be, beyond that as, as a person, um, you know, I think that in every setting that I've been in, um, I have demonstrated the ability to collaborate well with people, um, to work and adapt to changing environments and not to get stuck on a particular issue and helping to move the issue forward. And I hope that that's something that I can contribute to the Danvers public school system. Last few years have been challenging for us, but the world is still moving and time is still moving. And I think that um, we need to make sure that we're moving forward to continue to prepare our students for the future. And um, that's it. Thank you. Yes, thank you. All right, anything else before we let Alexis go back to the atrium? All right, thank you, Alexis. All right, thank you. Yeah. Thank you all. All right, we uh, move through that with alacrity. If there's, um, if any of you have any additional questions, I would entertain bringing the candidates back for an additional question. Um, if you feel it would help you make a decision, is that of interest to anybody? No, I don't have any other questions. Okay. Uh, I think I just want to make a motion to see if we can move to a unanimous vote. Okay, there is a motion that. Uh, I assume what you mean is a unanimous vote is going to be required to seat someone. Okay. Is there a second? Second. All right. And uh, is there discussion? Tough choice. <laughs> yeah. No discussion. All right. With uh, that being said, all those in favor of uh, requiring a unanimous vote to seat the new school committee member, please say aye. 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 Opposed? No. All right, so it's three to one, it carries. And so uh, for someone to be seated, it will require a unanimous vote. All right, um, do you wish to take a brief break before we vote? Or are you ready to move right on to the voting? From five. Yeah, yep. Vote? I think, we, yeah. All right, let's bring the uh, candidates back then, please, Diane, sorry. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs>
welcome back to the moment of truth. And um, I want to thank you all again for going through the process and especially for your willingness to serve the public schools and the citizens of Danvers and the town. Uh, again, you should all be commended. Um, so at this point, I would, uh, oh, by the way, while you were out, um, there was a motion to um, require that the vote be unanimous. So uh, to be seated, so someone is going to have to get four votes. Um, and so at this point, I will open the floor to motions to uh, appoint. I'd like to make the first motion and a, and a brief comment. Um, I'm convinced any of you would serve very, very well in this committee. I mean, that was very impressive across the board. Um, I think you all bring something unique um, to this, but unfortunately we can only vote for one person and, and this is incredibly hard, but I, I mean, I have to acknowledge um, this isn't the, my vote. This is just me making comments individually. Heidi, your background in law enforcement and passion for creating a safe school environment, very compelling, absolutely impressive. Alexis, your, your STEM background, your education, your passion for kids learning in the proper way going into the future, incredibly impressive from what I know. And, and Josh, I mean, in regards to process and education and, and the way you'd want to collaborate would be incredibly valuable. Um, so with that, I have to make my first vote. And the first person I'd like to make a motion for a vote on is Alexis. And uh, the reason why I want to make that motion is because when I think about this process and the person that's going to sit here and the incredibly difficult challenge of, nom of hiring a superintendent uh, in regards to the interview process and looking forward, um, everything that you said today really, really hit home. It was hard. I mean, I, my decision wasn't really made until we, really, we sat here. But um, that's my first um, person up for vote. So the, do I say make a motion to nominate? Okay, we have a motion. Is there a second? I hear no second. Did anyone second the nomination? No. Okay, uh, then I will open the floor for another nomination. We're going to be here all night. <laughs> um, I, I want to reiterate a lot of what Gabe said. I think you all bring something different to the table and something valuable for all of us. And I know I can speak for all of us where we have what's in the back of our mind in terms of the superintendent search coming up, um, what we see as the most pressing is issues in the district. And, you know, I think we're all pleased with the pool that we have in front of us. So again, thank you so much for taking the time to, to be with us. Um, I think for me, Honestly, I, I think about what we each individually bring to the table, and I try to look for, um, you know, varying um, perspectives. And I think Heidi brings a different perspective that we currently have with her background. Um, I know we've had students, representatives come in, and we've spoken to families about the issues in our schools regarding bullying and the, the safe environment that kids should feel. And um, I would move that we appoint Heidi Mora to the school committee. Is there a second? Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Um, with that, I will call for a vote. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, please say no. No. And the chair abstains. So it's two for, one against, one abstention. Is there another motion for the floor? Do we do two motions? Yeah, can we? anyone can. Make, I can't make. It. You can't make a motion. I can't make a motion. Yeah. I have to bring <laughs> yes, Josh, to please, <laughs> for a vote. Um, so I make a motion to nominate Josh Kepnes to school committee. All right, is there a second? I'll do a second. We have a motion, we have a second. Um, I will uh, call for a vote. All those in favor of Josh being appointed to the school committee, please say aye. 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 
So we have three eyes. All right. Hi. And to you, Josh. That was hard. <laughs> Alexis and uh, Heidi, thank you so much. Um, this was obviously a tough decision for everybody. Um, I hope and trust that you will continue to look for ways to contribute to the schools, to uh, whether it's through running for office in the future, whether it's serving on subcommittees as they come up, but um, based on how you presented yourselves tonight, um, you are uh, you're both eloquent and smart and have a lot to offer to the schools and to this town. And your presence here is most appreciated. And uh, with that, um, I will take a motion to adjourn. Again, with many thanks to you. Um, Josh, hang around a little bit. I just want to tell you the next steps for you. All right. Um, is there any other comment from anyone on the committee? No, but can I just remind everyone to, um, if you're interested in being on the screening committee, to apply to Alice and I. The date is um, Monday, October 31st. So please email us if you're interested. Okay. Um, so with that, we will meet again for our next regular meeting on November 14th. Uh, by that time, our new member will be seated. And... Uh, we look forward to seeing you all then with the full committee. And again, thank you to all of you for your participation. Thank you. I'm sorry? Yes. So motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Good night, Danvers. <laughs>